Do you know what I like to do sometimes? Sometimes. I like to look at some football cards. All right, guys. I want to show you my 1960 Topps football cards and talk about some of these players. I often show you this book, and it was the second baseball card book I ever got growing up. And they have a small section on non-baseball cards. And this was the first time I ever saw the 1960 Johnny Unitas. And I got a kick out of it as a kid because of the look on his face. And this was really my first glimpse into some vintage football cards, some older football cards. So I had to get Johnny U. Here's Jim Brown. Beautiful card. Bart Starr, this is a great card. Here's Joe Schmidt, a good linebacker out of Pitt. This one's signed. Leo Namalini. Now, <laughs> Leo Namalini was a defensive tackle. He was named the best defensive tackle of the first 50 years of football. He was born in Italy, learned to play football in the Marines. And when he got back from World War II, signed on with the 49ers. He was one of the few guys that was an all-pro on both offense and defense. And even though he was a big guy and a great football player, he was kind of docile. And his teammates used to coax him uh, to get mad because he played even better when he was mad. And they used to tell him that, People on the other team said something about him, and he'd be like, I'm, I'm going to kill that guy. And they'd get him all riled up, and he'd play even better. Ernie Stotner. Now, as hard as it to, is to believe, with all the great Pittsburgh Steeler Super Bowl teams and, and great players, up until a few years back when they retired Mean Joe Green's number, he was the only number the Pittsburgh Steelers ever retired for decades. Ernie Stotner. My dad said this was the best defensive lineman he ever saw. That's Big Daddy Lipscomb. Came up with the Colts. Won the NFL championship in 58 and 59. He died tragically young in 1963 of an overdose of heroin. He liked to chase running backs and women, liked to go out on the town, liked to dress up, liked to drink, liked to chase women. And they think he developed a heroin uh, problem within like six months of them finding him dead. He had a tragic life, never knew his father. His mother was stabbed to death. He was about six foot nine and 280 to 300 pounds, but he was fast and quick, uh, unusual for the time, and he could run down running backs. It was an extreme talent and a tragic life. Big Daddy Lipscomb. My dad said this guy played better when he was drunk. Bobby Lane. Tells me the story that <laughs> one day on his way to the game, he was so drunk, he walked into a streetcar. Never saw it. <laughs> this is an uncorrected error, and this shows Jim Taylor. And it's supposed to be Jim Taylor, the running back for the Green Bay Packers. But this is Jim Taylor, the linebacker for the Cardinals. And interestingly... Uh, he retired like two years before this card was even made. But they have the wrong image on there. Here is Bobby Mitchell. Great card. Same image as his rookie. A great Frank Gifford. 
Raymond Barry. Sam Huff, good linebacker. Earl Morrill, what an up and down story he was his whole career. He'd always come in as a backup and get get to start and do great things. <laughs> uh, they, they say this guy's kind of like the Barry Sanders of his day, Hugh McElhaney. This is Billy Houghton. He set the rookie touchdown mark, which was tied but not broken until 1998. He also set all-time records for receptions and yardage as a receiver. Billy Houghton. Allen, don't call me Don Amici. Good running back. And Charlie Connerly. That's what I have for you. Thanks for hanging out with me.